And so Raphael had come up to Washington to do some research about NAFTA, and I think he, he wrote a piece about the history of the development, thinking about it from an international relations and political side, not just from an economic side. And uh, he told me about uh, his association with the Tom. Of course, I knew about some of your superb uh, alumni who, uh, even at that time, had already moved to very impressive um, positions. And um, but I was also impressed that uh, uh, Raphael was trying to develop an international relations department. So, on a number of my visits to Mexico, I've tried to come to Itam really more to take your temperature about uh, what you're thinking or what questions you have. Uh, I know this is a superb school. I know that all of you are very fortunate to have an education here. Uh, I know you will have opportunities to go on to do very great and important things um, in different work walks of life. So my real purpose was more of an informal one, which is to maybe try to have a little bit of a dialogue or discussion. I'm happy to try to address questions, uh, but also I'd be interested in your perspectives of the world. Um, just to get us going a little bit, I'll just mention that um, on this visit, I had come from San Salvador, where I was meeting with a summit of the Central American presidents, because, um, as you could tell from the introduction, I worked a lot on issues of economic integration over the years. And I felt that while economic integration clearly has its efficiency benefits and reducing barriers, that there are often uh, important political and institutional aspects uh, that go along uh, with economic integration. Having been involved with negotiating the free trade agreement with the five Central American countries and the Dominican Republic, and before that, uh, in the 89-92 period, where I worked at, for Secretary Baker at the State Department in involving some of the peace accords uh, with El Salvador and with Nicaragua and the Escapulas process, Guatemala, well, I had a long-term interest in what one could do to build institutions, economic integration, to support the political side. There was actually a connection here I was making as I, as I came in, because during those years, I had an occasion to stop um, at Incaya, which is the business school in uh, Costa Rica and Nicaragua, because I was impressed that at that time it was... Uh, one of the few non-governmental institutions that covered the Central American countries brought together business uh, students. It was a very impressive uh, group of students I remember meeting at the time, an important alumni association. And um, the dean of Incaya came to me a number of months ago and said, here's some of the challenges we're facing in Central America. We've taught generations of, of, uh, of business people We'd also like to develop some programs in public administration. We'd like to strengthen the, the public sector. How could we uh, work together to do that? So uh, Pamela, our vice president for the region, and our country director for the region, Laura Fragenti, tried to work um, with President Fuentes of, uh, of uh, El Salvador to try to put together a process to look at how we could strengthen issues of integration. And interestingly enough, just as in Mexico, the number one issue was one of security, the question of their work on uh, organized crime, our narcotics, some of the challenges this poses for their institutions. We thought there's a tremendous amount we could do in the area of trade facilitation, uh, logistics. One of the areas we've worked on at the bank, a nice compliment to my work in the trade area, is to see how, for example, East Asia has reduced cost barriers and improved the prospects of trade by focusing on custom services, moving goods more quickly, uh, sort of one-stop arrangements, and so there's things like that we can bring uh, to Central America. Also, some issues that are similar to ones that you face in Mexico about uh, some of the issues from climate change and from uh, natural disasters and how you deal with hurricanes and earthquakes and how this affects on the financial side as well as on the reconstruction side. Um, and uh, so uh, we also thought that that meeting could be important in trying to bring Honduras back into the context of the Central American countries. So um, one of the uh, points that I think this again emphasizes to me and I'm interested in your perspectives on is how you can see regional integration as part of a 
uh, a development tool. Uh, you can see it not only on the business side, but in terms of trying to strengthen institutions of democracy and support one another. On the security issue, you'll be interested in uh, one of the topics that I've talked about with President Calderon, but also uh, President Santos, President Alex Santos of Colombia, who's in town today, who I had a chance to see, was given the anxieties about the security questions in Central America, is that here you've had an experience in Colombia and Mexico, people have learned a lot the hard way, um, and whether one could apply some of these lessons and perhaps share some of that experience with the countries in Central America. Um, and then, of course, maybe try to engage the United States, Canada, and the Europeans to be a further uh, support in that issue. Um, since I was in San Salvador, I thought it would be a good opportunity to come visit Mexico. We work very closely uh, with your government on the economic downturn, which I know was a particularly severe one uh, for Mexico, significantly because of your connection to the U.S. market, but also some of the issues that you had with influenza. There were just a combination of things. It was very difficult. Um, but we were very pleased. We, last year, we committed about $6.5, $6.8 billion of resources uh, to Mexico, and disbursements of about $5 billion. That's a lot more than it had been uh, in advance of the crisis. But what was really important was the partnership we had um, with your colleagues in the government, because uh, we were able, for example, to take the Opportunatus program, which is a fantastic example, been replicated around the world to expand it in terms of numbers of people, uh, expand it in terms of resources. So one of the lessons we learned from the financial crises in the 90s was that macroeconomic stability isn't enough. If you don't focus on the safety net program for the bottom end, you really can lose a generation. Children can be forced out of school, people can have malnutrition for their families, and you can lose the benefits uh, uh, of, of the next generation. So in this crisis, we tried to not only work with Mexico, but other countries in supporting targeted safety net programs where the capacity varies. So you and Brazil have these very good conditional cash transfer programs. Some in Africa don't have the capacity. So there we worked on school feeding programs, food for work programs, other emphasis. I also wanted to get a sense of how the government is looking to some of the growth challenges. As you know, while you're coming out of a um, you know, a, a recession, you're part of a world economy which doesn't stop. And so what are the plans in terms of infrastructure? What are the plans in terms of um, education and technical training to help strengthen the overall value-added capabilities of the workforce? Um, and of course, an important part of the visit was talking with President Calderon about the Cancun climate change meeting. He's been a real leader uh, in this process. Uh, probably most of you followed what happened in Copenhagen and know there were a lot of frustrations. And these are challenging processes because you have about 195 countries you're trying to reach agreement. And so we at the bank have been trying to be helpful with a number of developing countries, whether it be forestation issues, whether it be financing technology. We have a big project, uh, the urban transport project in Mexico City, trying to improve the flow of traffic but also reduce emissions. Um, and try to see how we can uh, support the Mexican government and the UN process uh, for, for this Cancun meeting. So um, that's a little bit of the context of, of uh, why I'm here. Um, just in a broader sense, uh, we just finished our fiscal year, June 30th. We had the biggest ever in terms of financing, about $72 billion uh, from our IBRD lending or IFC for the private sector, but also uh, IDA, which is our funds for the, for the very poorest. Um, we were able to secure <coughs> agreement from our 187 shareholders to do a capital increase because we think that the financing needs are going to remain very large. And my own sense is that you know, while the good news is there's a recovery, the not so good news is there's a lot of uncertainties about the nature of that uh, recovery. So we want to be in a position to help. But one of the other things that's important about the bank, and it fits so well with uh, a lot of the studies that you have here and the work that you do here, is that we keep trying to emphasize that while financing is important, it's probably not the most important thing that the World Bank does. Our real value added is combining the money with knowledge and learning and experience that we gain from around the world. 
Because if you take $72 billion or since the crisis began, it's about $135 billion. Well, that's a big number compared to the challenges of development or capital markets. It's still 